So I just finished erasing the video that I just made to do a walk around on the van. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Unfortunately, I took it through a construction zone and um, kicked some mud up on it. So it's not perfectly clean right now. Hopefully you'll overlook that for now. I'll clean it off before the truck comes to get it. So let's go over the van one more time. All right, things that I've done. Windshield is new. The seal is also new. I didn't have to do that, but the old one was cracked. Um, it would have sealed, but it just looked ugly. All of the seals along the pop top, there's three different seals here. All of those are new. The door handles have all been refurbished, sanded, repainted, um, as well as all four rims. The tires are new. I'll show you a close up on the tires. See, brand new tread. You can st still see the little rubber hairs coming off the side of the tires. The brakes work great. The vinyl wrap turned out really nice. I'm actually pretty happy with the vinyl wrap. You know, like I said on the phone, it's not professionally done, but it's done by me and I try to do a good job of everything. Put a new Westphalia sticker on the back. Both of these have stainless hardware installed on them, whereas they did not before. Um, I've gone ahead and replaced the caps on the bumpers. Those were cracked and faded. I've refurbished the propane system. That's a new regulator. I've gone through all of the different seals through the whole system and retaped those, resealed those, sanded and repainted the entire um, tank, and then also painted the guard as well. Left the sticker on, I masked around that, so it looks stock and original. I've gone through and I painted all the the mounting for the swing arms. Um, those tend to lose paint and get a little bit rusty, so I've gone through and repainted all of those just to protect it from the elements. Underneath the van, this right here is the gas heater. It takes gasoline from the tank and there's a combustion chamber inside of there. and um, it that's a heater much like you'd have a heater in your home for the coach portion the reason that i've unhooked that is because there's plenty of stories online where people have um, been running one of these one of the safety switches failed and it heated up too much and burned down the van and people have died from that so that's just unhooked if you want a propane heater go get a propex it's the best brand out there and just install a second propane tank over on this edge and just run a Propex heater. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any effort into fixing this gas heater. I know you're from Minnesota, so I think you'll be happy to see that the, the body is nice and clean and not rusted out. I actually used to live in Minnesota as well, and every vehicle I've ever seen from, um, you know, the Mississippi on east has been completely corroded and destroyed. But as you can see, this is in good shape. Some of the undercoating has flecked off and you can see the paint underneath, but it's not rusted by any means. I've gone through and cleaned every surface. I want to make sure there was no scuffs or damage left over. As I said before, this is a full floating floor. If you want to take that out, that mean, floating floor means it's not actually attached to the carpet. The carpet's still underneath. Um, it's just this strip along here and this strip along here that's attached down, and that holds the floor down, as well as this coping edge. But I'd leave it in. I like this a whole lot better than the carpet. Um, it's much, much easier to clean. You just um, take a towel or any thing to sweep it and comes right out. So, as I said before, all of this upholstery did come out. I wanted to make sure that it was nice and clean. It wasn't stained or gross, but, you know, upholstery sort of gets a funk, especially after, you know, 30, 32, 33 years, however long it's been in there. So, um, steam cleaned it, shampooed it, took it all apart, re reinstalled it. it. Smells great now, there's no weird smells. All of this carpet paneling work, I did. Goes all the way back and up through there. The, the wallpaper had started to wrinkle, so that's why I did all that. It looked really nice. Um, that's the other one. Of course, this folds down into a bed. You have all the normal Westphalia things. 
Inside this is your water storage tank. You don't fill it from in there, but it has a big hole that you can unscrew on the top and reach down and clean your tank, which is really, really nice. I've had quite a few motorhomes with um, mold and other buildup inside the tanks after sitting with water in them for months at a time, but you'll never have to worry about that with Westfalia. These two 12 volt plugs, they don't have any wires running to them. Um, those were installed by a previous owner and he never went ahead and went the full distance to wire them up. I also have not wired them up. Here's your fridge. Has all the lighting instructions right here and the model number, so if you ever need to service it. I lit this fridge, it was about 20 degrees outside, and so I didn't have any food that I need to keep cold out in here. But um, the fridge did light, um, seems to work just fine. It can run on 120, it can run on um, 12 volts, or it can run on gas. The gas is the propane. Right here. I don't know if it's going to be loud enough to hear, but I'll turn on the gas, see if you can hear it. There you go. Gas is running to both. If I had a match, I'd light it for you, but I don't with me. Uh, I mentioned in the ad that the test, the button on the test lights has, you know, I don't know, just gone. But if you hold them together, you can see that... The battery flashes is good and the, and the water is empty. So anyway, that's just a connection that you make with those two wires. Here's your water right here. There's no water in the tank, but maybe you can hear the pump turn on. So there's no secondary pump switch. All you do is you turn the water pump, well, the, the water nozzle on, and that turns the pump on. Let's pop the top. I have to set the phone down. All right. As, as you know, the top is brand new, so of course it's in good shape. The only weird anomaly we already talked about on the phone, this zipper is on the inside. The only way to access that window is through the zipper, but you can't get up on top of the van very easily. So I decided to take this one inside zipper and keep it on the inside where you could reach it rather than flipping it inside out and having that be on the outside. For some strange reason, these zippers are on the outside. I don't know what to think about that. I just sort of logic through it and said, well, um, I guess the front window is the most important and so you can easily reach the side windows from outside, but you can't easily reach this one from outside. I redid the carpet on this as well. It started to get sort of wrinkly and ugly. Here's a view. Inside here, it's clean, no rips, tears, stains, anything like that. It's in good shape up there. Now, I'm gonna put the video on pause, um, drop the top, and we will go for a ride. But just a little point here. Um, you put your hands in these two corners as you're folding the top down, and that'll tighten these walls um, so that you don't get any overhang flapping in the wind as you drive. So, and you can tell it's a good seal. See how slow that's coming down? It's because of the air pressure. Um, if there are holes and gaps, you wouldn't be, it would just drop quickly. So let me put this down and I'll clip the top back shut and I'll fire it up. We can go over the engine and go for a test drive. All right, here's the engine. A couple of things that have been done here besides completely rebuilding the engine, I rebuilt the whole ignition system. So this is a new coil, new condenser, which is right back here, that's the condenser, um, new cap, also a new rotor in there. The ignition works great now. One little teething issue that I had when I reinstalled the engine, um, I noticed that the gas pedal was sort of sticky. It would stick down and um, you wouldn't be able to decelerate very easily. I found that it was this section right here. This is, this is your throttle right here. That's your throttle cable coming in. And this arm actuates the EGR valve, which is an emissions thing. 
Anyway, right there on that cable, it was sticking and holding the throttle open, even when you take your foot off the gas. So what I did was I greased that up and no more sticking issues. So if maybe in five years, let's say that grease gets a little bit old and it starts to stick, that's the first place I'd look. Second teething issue, see how this injector right here is zip tied on. The reason for that is there is a small crack in the injector clip and so it um, tends to unplug itself. Right after I put the engine in, it was running great and then suddenly it was misfiring, running on three cylinders. Um, took me a long time to figure out what was going on because it doesn't actually come all the way off. It just comes off, you know, just the slightest amount which loses contact and you lose that injector. So after testing everything I could think of, finally I um, put my stethoscope up to all four injectors and found that one not to be firing and figured out that that clip was sliding backwards off. I've put a few hundred miles on it since then, we haven't had any issues at all. So if for whatever reason you start to lose power, the engine's running funny, I would certainly see if that um, zip tie has come off of there or it's moved in any way, that's the first place I'd look. If you have a long screwdriver, you can just place it against the bottom of the injector and place it against your ear and listen for a tick, 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 and that means that the injector is firing. If you don't hear that, the injector is not firing and you'll, you will have found your problem. Everything else in here works excellent. Of course, there's no oil leaks. Um, what's the nice thing about a brand new engine is it's not going to be staining your driveway anywhere. Oops, gotta put the cover back on. And we'll take it for the spin. I wanted to show you this real quick with the cover back installed. Um, how nice and clean everything is back here. You know, this thing hasn't been abused or beat up. Also underneath here, I can show you the bottom of the engine that there's absolutely no oil leaks of any kind coming out of here. Everything is in great shape. Once again, you can look at all the seams, there's no rust. So now, let's take it for a test drive. So it might be a little bit tricky operating the gears with a phone in my hands. But as I said before, this is my second go around, so <laughs> I should be able to pull it off. So all the lights are off. So reverse is down, over, and up. These things are supposed to be really slow, and they are, um, but it's certainly, you know, not to a point where it would ever be dangerous in any way. And it'll get up to freeway speeds pretty much, you know, 75 might be a little bit of a stretch, but 65, 70, no problem. Now, it's zero to 60 time, would, I would say is approximately a weekend. <laughs> but it'll get you there and it'll hold there. Um, you'll be downshifting on the hills. So, let's see, I get a little space between the guy behind me and I'll get onto the brakes a little bit hard here to show you how well it stops up here at the, at the light. Check the speedometer out. No, 
I don't want the car behind me to hit me so I didn't stomp on it all the way. But the, the brakes feel great. It's really safe to drive. It handles really well too. Having not um, been in a lot of VW vans, um, I actually am really surprised with how easy it is to steer. They, they don't have power steering, but the steering wheel is pretty big, so you have quite a bit of leverage. One thing that I really like about it is how quiet it is. I've had quite a few different micro motorhomes and they're usually loud and clanky and rattly. Now this isn't, you know, you're not riding in a, a luxury car or anything. It's not perfectly quiet, but compared to other motorhomes, it's surprisingly quiet and easy to drive. So one neat thing about this, you can tell that a lot of engineering has gone into it. We're able to keep up with traffic, no problem. We can speed if we want, but we're not going to. When I first got it, um, it had a nasty rattling engine, or rattling sound that came from the engine. It had two dropped um, valves, and well, the connecting rods were all loose, and you know, it was just a mess. Um, what had happened is, actually, VW has a pseudo uh, thermostat, and what it does is it opens and closes some air vents to help keep the engine cool, but the problem was is those um, fail very often. So when that failed, it locked it in the closed position, and that would be um, its heat up position so that the engine can get up to temperature quickly but it doesn't if it doesn't ever open um, then once it's up to temperature then it just keeps on heating up and keeps on heating up because it doesn't allow more air to come in and keep it cool so they had overheated the engine and um, just basically destroyed it from top to bottom so what I've done is I actually took that mechanism out and its default is the full cool position which means that it gets full airflow and it's spring loaded to stay in that position so what that means is that the engine may take just you know slightly longer to warm up um, you'll just have to you know be conscious to not just jump on the gas right away um, especially there in Minnesota give it a little bit of time to get warm before you get up to freeway speeds probably but the the plus side is that it'll never lock out the air in um, in heat up position so you won't he overheat the engine now another thing the engine builder told me is that it's a good idea to check the oil um, probably once a week twice a week especially if you're driving it every you know thousand miles or so keep an eye on the oil especially for the first two or three thousand miles because as the pistons seat into the crosshatch on the cylinder walls as the as the rings seat into those as well into the pistons um, you're gonna have just a little bit of oil burn which is completely normal but let's say you burn a quart of oil in the whole break-in process um, this is only a four quart engine and if it's 25% down on oil, oil and air are what cool this engine. If you're a little low on oil, the engine can't keep itself cool. So you're absolutely gonna have to keep, keep your eye on that oil. Um, you know, once you're comfortable that it's not burning oil or anything like that, it's not losing any, um, then it won't be such a big issue. But certainly before any trip, you'll wanna make sure that the oil is topped up. All right, there you go. Everything's running great. Here's your radio. It's happening to coffee. Two countries have declared states of emergency because of coffee leaf rust. What? It's already nice and hot in here. Um, it's kind of a warm day, but it's certainly hot in here. This, this lever controls the amount of heat that gets split between the top and the middle. 
The second lever controls hot and cold, and the third and fourth levers, I'm not exactly sure what they do. This um, runs the gas heater, but like I said, it's unplugged, so that won't do anything. These other controls, I don't know what they do. I'm just not familiar enough with VW and Vanagon to tell you what they do. Some of them look aftermarket, some of them look stock, I'm just not sure. Well, this is a 12 volt, but beyond that, I just don't know. You can hear the engine run. Runs nice and smooth. I'll rev it up a little for you. It's actually the, the very same engine that goes into the Porsche 914. So I can't remember if they're either 70 or 90 horsepower, but I don't think it really matters either way. It's slow. Anyway, that's the van. If you have any questions, certainly get back to me. Um, other than that, I've tried to go over all the important things that I would want to know um, buying a vehicle sight unseen. I'm fairly comfortable and familiar with vehicles, so I've tried to go over all the important points. Anyway, enjoy your van.